All right, good morning. Let's see where this goes, but I got Axel next to me and we're driving into work. And I thought of like, I don't know, <laughs> the cliche of like my why. What is my why, right? Like what's everyone's why? Why do they get out of bed in the morning? Why do they do what they do? Why do they, what gives them satisfaction to like being able to share with other people in the world that makes it worthwhile to even, you know, post something on Instagram, YouTube. <laughs> so I uh, was gonna make a podcast. I hope, I really hope by this weekend, kind of just monologue, to kind of spill the beans on some things that have been going on and, uh, you know, share some of my recent experiences with some people uh, through sickness and in health. And uh, really, I think there is a lot of value to be extracted from that when it comes to the way uh, people have been feeling when it comes to, uh, you know, any potential long hauler syndrome attached to the Schmiris. But for those of you who haven't listened to a lot of my material or if you're newer to the channel and, you know, we all are limited in our time in terms of what we can actually consume and continue to do for ourselves. So here goes nothing. As we got a terrible driver just drifting into my lane every 0.2 seconds, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the day that I get clipped by somebody. But, but what I want to do is let everybody know that the reason that I became a chiropractor, the reason why I practiced the Gonstead method of chiropractic, and what I hope to pay forward, and why I always talk about truth and love and paying it forward in my videos and on in my content, my channel, it's the fact that when I was in my young 20s and I uh, had had back pain, and I mean really debilitating back pain, from like 15 years old, all the way through the, the end of high school, all the way through the first part of college, constantly out with back spasms, constantly, you know, being slowed down with nagging injuries, always related to my back. Now everybody out there has their fucking opinion, right? Everyone, opinions are like assholes, we all got them. And everybody out there thinks they have the answer. Or people will say, you know, I don't know the answer. But they but they go with it like a protocol. They'll be like, you know, I don't know the answer. It's very Western medicine of the of the typical, like, you know, it's, it's honest sometimes for the most part. You know, well, we don't really know what's going on. These things kind of just manifest. Might be some early onset arthritis. It might be some tendonitis. You probably pull the muscle. You gotta stretch your hamstrings more. So these are the kinds of things I heard on a very consistent basis. And when I was in the most amount of pain, when I was the most vulnerable, when I stood seemingly to lose the most because of my debilitating back injuries, the orthopedic surgeon said he couldn't do surgery. The physical therapists were putting me through a lot of exercise regimens that were very, you know, standard things that were not just, you know, no pain, no gain type feelings. They were actually, you know, really, you know, hurting me. Uh, in other words, they were exacerbating the condition and they'd be taking notes in the corner and I'd be suffering and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, nobody cares. Not saying that that's all physical therapists. That was my experience at a, at a physical therapist in uh, probably 2013 when, when I blew out my discs uh, doing a Olympic weightlifting incident. I went to the acupuncturist and he was a cool dude but he kept putting needles in me and I kept feeling more warmth in my leg, but nothing was happening. There was nothing good in the end. You know, he recommended a whole bunch of care, you know, very reminiscent of what chiropractors do. Sometimes what I have to do, recommend a lot of care. And I just said, you know, I just don't feel any different. There was no difference, I'm sorry. So finally I called back my chiropractor and I, uh, who I had been recommended to for some like, you know, more, you know, moderate back pain kind of stuff. And, and it felt really good after. I always felt better after I got adjusted. But back then, I just associated with, you know, I got a crack in my back because some joint pain. And even I, I, I just didn't know the herniated disc aspect of things. Like, I had a herniated disc. There was no doubt about it. The, the pain just shooting down my leg to my, to my pinky toe. Uh, I, I could not stand up. It was just devastating pain that the, uh, 
you know, Advil wasn't doing anything about. And I called up the chiropractor, Doug DeCubellis in Rhode Island. If you've listened to a lot of my content, you know I give him a shout out all the time. Best chiropractor I've ever been around. And I just, I mean, the confidence, right? I said, Doug, I'm, I'm dying over here. I know you guys don't deal with herniated discs. And Doug says, what are you talking about? Come on down to the office. Short story is, I, I show up there, I'm like repeating myself, like, oh, you know, they told me you don't do herniated discs. And looks at me, he's like, do you want to get better? I'm like, yeah, I want to get better. Get on this table. Let's go get up on the table. That simple. I mean, that was, that was all I needed to hear. Hey, another runner. So I get up on that table. And he does his feeling around, and he's, he's doing some motion, and he realizes he doesn't even he, does, he did a straight leg raise, kind of like lit me up as soon as that, that foot comes off the table. He says, "All right, you know, let's do this." Puts me in a like a side pretzel posture, and and the biggest audible, loudest crunch, crack, deepest thud inside my body I've ever felt. Pressure gradients galore. Felt like water and fluid and air and everything else was just moving all over the place and just amazing amounts of relief upon that initial shock of the feeling moving through that motion so fast and i got off that table and i just couldn't even believe how different i felt it was like it was it was like unreal it just like took the wind out of me right and i'm walking to my car he says i'll see you tomorrow <laughs> and i'm walking to my car and I'm like, the pain is less and less and less. I go back the next day, I get a small adjustment. It was like barely, barely anything moved, but he's like, okay, that's it. You know, you're, you're good, you know, just uh, take it easy. Don't, don't, don't go crazy at CrossFit, whatever. I could go into more detail, but I'm not. By that night, I was in the, the gym with a, with a weight belt on, you know, deadlifting, you know, 85 pounds off the ground, doing light pull-ups, um, you know, motioning, you know, doing light core work, you know, jogging around, jogging around the gym. You know, as we, as we would say in the CrossFit community, jogging around the box. So I was back. That happened in one day after, you know, two weeks of just debilitating pain and suffering. Um, but even prior to that, years of suffering that was alleviated by chiropractic. But I didn't even, like, appreciate it because I had never been in that much pain before. Now, fast forward to today, me as a chiropractor, 2022 or whatever, what are we, 2021, <laughs> me as a chiropractor... I mean, the fact that I get to do that for people, you know, a few times a week, because that, that doesn't just come into your office every day. We're, we're oftentimes the last resort once all the damage is done. They're going to the orthopedic surgeon for that. They're going to the neurologist. They're going to their primary care physician to get a bunch of meds. A lot of people go to the emergency room for that kind of pain, and, and I understand why. Uh, you know, we don't even need to get down that road. You share this video, let them know. Just come to the chiropractor. Come to a chiropractor who, who knows what they're doing in situations like this. Uh, sometimes they'll have to understand that it's going to take some time. You know, it can't always be, you know, one adjustment that, you know, changes everything. It does happen. It does happen often. But more or less, or I should say most of the time, like 70 to 80 percent of the time, it's a, it's a process. Three, four, six adjustments in, you know, things start going in the right direction. People are like, wow, I really notice a considerable difference. So that's a week of their life that they have to deal with the adjustment, right? <laughs> the adjustment that they're adjusting to their new norm, and it, it's it's really a, a less expensive, least invasive type of natural way of being able to train the body's appropriate biomechanics after an injury like that. Now, all that being said, I think one of the things I really want to really kind of elaborate on and then end here with this is we all know if you've been you know tuned into the channel at all cars off now if you've tuned into the channel at all you know that i have been running every day uh i mean i don't know what it was about hella sadibe's interview with rich roll how he ran every day for four years and then ran across the country and then continued to run every day and i just like the, every year I keep coming back to sort of the same, uh, I come back to the same, uh, what is, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm intrigued by the same thing every year that I hear a podcast that is about a guy who ran across the country. For whatever reason, this resonates with me. And I mean, I am not a runner. I am a recreational runner 
who loves, and I mean loves running. I fucking love running. I love getting out there. I love the way it feels once I get going after the first, you know, people a quarter mile, mile, whatever, first mile sucks. No, I feel good within like the first 100 to 200 meters. I mean, I'm feeling really good. I, you know, even if I have like right now, I'm dealing with a little right ankle pain, a little uh, instability or something down there, a little sprain, I think, but it's nothing. I mean, it's, I love it. And then I think of it from like the people perspective, like I love people. So in actuality, the idea of running across the country and actually going state to state and interacting with various people who I otherwise would never meet, especially uh, along the scenic routes and the countryside, farmers, uh, people that own these like m- more like uh, rural type, you know, pubs or bars or restaurants, um, little thrift stores. Uh, Kind of the way it looks like over, you know, if you've all been to Fort Worth, like, I just think that's so cool. And hopefully this doesn't, all right, good. And I just think that's so cool. I really want to do that. And it it occurred to me, I said, well, if I'm ever going to have the opportunity, if I'm ever going to do it, and there's, there's no guarantee I will, I'm not putting that on myself. It's, I need to be able to run at a slow pace, like I'm good at, (laughs) for incredibly long distances. And it feel like I'm being rewarded for it, you know, mental, you know, m- mental health, like the, the aspect of mentally, spiritually, you know, being rewarded, self-fulfillment reward. And I can share that with everyone out there, including, uh, including our, our buddy here, Dr. Axel, I can share it with him too. Now, the thing is, Everything I've done from the time I started training is completely the opposite of what I have done my whole life. And what what I mean by that is I am sleeping more. I am I am rolling out my muscles and the sore spots more. I'm focused on my breathing techniques through the nose, out through the mouth, or in through the nose and out through the nose to relax my diaphragm and stop over-bracing through the thoracolumbar area more. I am doing mobility work with lacrosse balls and actually, as you see, like things like hanging from a bar and then stretching hamstrings in an appropriate manner that protects my back, along with working on my psoas muscle, whether it's rolling on a baseball, which now I graduated to a baseball. It used to be only the lacrosse ball. Now it's a baseball. And, um, I believe it's, um, got, it's just firmer with like less give and bigger in uh, circumference. So it actually gets into the psoas muscle a little bit deeper as it props up as I lay into it and working the psoas muscle so that to take away from that, some of that anterior pelvic tilt and be able to stand more upright and activate my glutes and roll out all the thoraco, uh, sorry, the glute, you know, fascia and the, and the proper muscles has actually been the most dedicated I've ever been to it. Also adding on to taking fish oil and magnesium malate every single day. And I can just say that in 14 days, so that's two weeks of running every day. I used to never make it past three days without having debilitating pain. I can only say that it's because I've done all these extra things that I've completely and totally put tons of emphasis in. Uh, I am eating way more junk food. So in the sense of just making sure that I have enough food in my body, rather than when I was in deep ketosis, being super strict, but probably quite dehydrated and reducing the amount of miles. So like really baby stepping in, in, right? I did 14 minutes a day for seven days. I did uh, 18 minutes a day for seven days. And now I'm up to 20 minutes. I'm going to do 20 minutes a day for seven days until I go back up to, you know, 22 or 24 minutes just to see where it is, to see where I can go comfortably to then be able to handle that incredibly long distance. If that is what I so desire. And in my mind, at least right now, that is what I desire. I've been happier. I've been uh, consistent. I feel like, no, sorry, the dog's getting antsy and I shut off the AC here. It's not that bad. Look at this guy. Oh, I just got down. I have been mentally sharper. I've been happier. I've been able to share with people in a more like just consistent, honest, you know, good mood. 
I feel good about myself. Um, and it's not even so much as like, oh, I lost weight. I'm feeling great. You know, there's definitely the body image aspect of it, but it's, it's, it's the ability to say like, Hey, I'm getting all this done and I'm not making excuses in the sense of like, oh, I don't have time for it. I make time. I make it a priority and I feel good about getting it accomplished. And that translates into my feeling of, of mental health and wellness. And I need that to pay it forward, to complete my, right? To fulfill my why, so I can share that with the world. And my sharing that with the world is always my, my honest effort to give them the best adjustment I can give them on that day, see what their body is, is ready to receive, and hopefully get them feeling better <laughs> than they could have possibly felt without my help. And, and it is just that it, I'm helping, you know, deliver that I am, you know, what do they call that? I'm the conduit, but their body is doing the healing and they, and their breathing and their relaxation and their trust in me is just as big a part of the adjustment. What do you, what do you see? What do you see? Is just as big a part of the adjustment as anything I do as the adjuster. Um, I don't know guys, if you can go ahead and comment and let me know if you heard what I say, <laughs> comment, go ahead and let me know if you've heard this message. Uh, I hope you got something from it. Uh, this is going to be up on my podcast. So go ahead and subscribe and leave a nice star, um, and feel free to leave a five-star review to the Dr. Perlman podcast. That's the DR period Perlman podcast, uh, DR Perlman TV, Instagram, all one word, DR Perlman TV, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, you know, we're even on Facebook at the Paramount Chiropractic and Wellness page. Uh, please, you know, guys, subscribe, share, tell people, comment, take something from it. I hope that it helps leave you fulfilled, not just so you can figure out your why. Again, I know it sounds cliche, but, you know, we should be feeling good about ourselves so we can influence others posit positively with or without a Facebook or YouTube channel. This is about the people you interact with the most. They want to feel that energy from you, no matter what, whether you understand it or not. They want to feel positive energy. They want to feel fulfillment. They want to feel good. They want to know that you've got their best interest at heart, and that can only be done when you have your own best interest at heart. I think we'll leave it at that. Guys, until next time, it's Dr. Perlman.